Watch what you bet here on Wednesday night hump day, Teddy. Cubs and the Braves going to battle on Wednesday night. Talking about teams on the mat right now. Both teams entering this game at 1-3. and three. Braves minus 133, total of 8.5. SunTrust Park tonight, ESPN, Lester and Tehran on the mound. We've all known in the past, Teddy, about SunTrust and how well, or should I say how not well, Tehran does down there. But Lester, 3 ERA through his first game. Tehran roughed up a little bit in the Phillies outing, 5.40 ERA. Both these look. It's it's early. It's 162 game season. One and three. These teams want to start to get on a roll here, so they'll be getting at it tonight. Yeah, one would think so. Uh, and certainly, I think the Cubs' day off yesterday probably did them a lot of good. <laughs> you know, their loss in the opener was as ugly as it gets. You know, six errors in that ball game. They stranded ten runners uh, on base. Lousy at bats throughout. Lousy pitching throughout. Lousy feeling throughout. Infielder David Boat will quote: "We're saying it's only on April Fools does a game like that happen." That's why we got 158 left to go. We'll be all right. Certainly agree with that. Certainly like John Lester early in the season. He's had a pretty good track record uh, against uh, this Atlanta offense, uh, Atlanta lineup. Six and two with a 2.47 ERA and nine career starts against him. Although we haven't faced him uh, since 2017. He has pretty good track records against a lot of those Atlanta hitters. You talk about Julio Tehran, you know, he had a bad loss. Uh, in his uh, debut against the Phillies. Uh, we're talking about a guy that, as you mentioned, has had his share of issues. He has owned Chris Bryant. He struck him out five times uh, in 11 uh, matchups. But I'll tell you what, you know, <laughs> the Cubs off a complete garbage game with the day off. That's the only way I could look in this one. I understand that the Braves are a bet on team, and I'm confident that Atlanta is not going to be in this funk forever. Certainly signing CUNA to the long-term deal helps that locker room. You know, we're paying our guys, but Cubs off a dismal showing with the day off to me is the way to look in this one. It'd be Chicago or pass for this better. Taking a look here, Teddy. Obviously, we said there is day Major League Baseball. Just popped on Milwaukee and Cincinnati, so we got a nice day slate. Flows right into the night, but we do have some playoff mode basketball here, Teddy, to talk about in the NBA, and that's with the Celtics and the Heat. Roughly to pick them right now, you can get at certain sports books. This is why we talk about shopping around. Right now, Teddy Pinnacle showing a minus one in the favor of the Miami Heat, but then offshore ball Chris at minus one in the favor of the Boston Celtics. 7.30 tonight, American Airlines Arena from Miami, Florida. Boston Celtics 35-41 and 41 against the number on the season. 8-15 and 15 against the spread on the road as a favorite. And the Miami Heat coming in at 41-34 and 34 against the spread. But how about this, Teddy? If they are going to be lined as a dog at tip, 25-12 and 12 against the spread as an underdog this year. Doesn't look like tonight, Teddy. I know last game we talked about it. You had a lot of fun with a Bam Adebayo three-pointer at the gun. We'll see if we get some of these fireworks tonight. Yeah, yeah. Bam, bam. I, I will send him a Christmas <laughs> card. You can count on it uh, this year. Really enjoyed his meaningless three at the buzzer uh, in the first uh, set of this home and home series between the Heat and the Celtics. And Boston dominated that game for extended stretches. They were up early. You know, they were they were hitting everything in the first quarter. Miami looked lost. Uh, I think it got the lead got up as 20 or 21 or early on in that game. And he just kept chipping and chipping and chipping. Ended up uh, coming in just under the number. Now, look, playoff intensity, you betcha. Miami holds the number eight spot in the East. They're only a half game ahead of uh, Orlando. They're in this tight matchup, you know, with Brooklyn in the mix, obviously, Detroit in the mix. It's a battle. Every win matters. And, of course, Orlando plays the Knicks tonight. So that half game lead, well, (laughs) we'll see how it holds. Uh, You know, uh, Eric Spolstra following the game the other night. Obviously, the guy showed some grit. It looked like we were shell-shocked in the first six or seven minutes. Boston came out with a great deal of energy. The final three quarters is what's necessary for the entirety. This is all hands on deck, Spolster quote. Whatever's necessary. We're fighting, scratching, and clawing to try to get in this darn thing. Every game is like a playoff game. For Boston, every game's not quite a playoff game yet. (laughs) You know, uh, not yet. You know, yes, they hold the tiebreaker edge over the Pacers for the four seed in the East. If Boston's the five seed in the East, they're still going to beat Indiana. <laughs> you know, uh, they do play at Indiana on Friday night, a potential look ahead. But last but not least, we spent all this time talking about the, the handicap and the handicap and the handicap. But what Donnie was talking about with the point spread. All right. Where you can get a plus one on either team right now. Yeah, it's only going to come into play once or twice out of 100 games. But you know what? You turn two pushes into wins out of 100, two losses into pushes, see what that does to your bankroll. It's extraordinary, the difference 
Let's talk about four plays out of 100 for shopping around lines. Two, two, losses, two losses into pushes, two pushes into wins. It makes a surprisingly large difference on your overall bankroll growth when you're pushing or winning these tight games instead of pushing or losing them. And trust me, if you do lose that game because you got the minus one instead of the plus one or vice versa, you will remember that for a long time as well. Lesson learned, SBRodds.com. Check it out. Get the best line possible. Teddy, take two on the CBI from South Florida to Chicago. DePaul favored by minus six. Total, 146.5. Money line split, plus 200. Minus 248 p.m. tonight on ESPNU from McGrath Phillips Arena in Chicago, Illinois. USF, Teddy, 21 and 13 against the number in all line gains. Eight and four against the spread as a dog. Six and one, Teddy. Six and one on the road against the spread as a dog. DePaul, 15 and 18 against the spread this season. Seven and eight against the spread as a favorite. And 10 11 at home. Keep in mind, once again, people, this is a three game series. So if DePaul wins tonight, we get a deciding game three. Well, we were wrong when we talked about game one, talking about how side and total were related. We're like, yeah, well, if the Paul's going to hang here, this game's got to go over the total. That wasn't the case. The Paul hung, the game stayed under. And that probably a positive sign for the Blue Demons moving forward. They, were, they hit, what, 30% in the first half. 25 points at halftime was the lowest mark of the year uh, for DePaul. This is a team that averaged close to 79 uh, points per game. Luckily, they were able to force turnovers, uh, nine turnovers in the first half from UCF to keep the game close. Second half, South Florida was able to knock down a handful of threes, but they were never able to pull away in that ball game. The question is, does DePaul get good looks tonight? They didn't get a whole lot in uh, the first meeting between these two teams. And coming off the buzzer-beating loss, you know, with David Collins hitting that game winner as time expired, does DePaul have that intestinal fortitude to bounce back off a loss like that? Not necessarily easy for the Blue Demons to cover a number like this in a game in a series that has been obviously game one as close as it gets. No surprise here if game two is fairly close down the stretch as well. I don't trust DePaul to cover this number, especially not after the linemen. 